Hey everyone, how's it going? So a question I see come up all the time, everywhere, is which DLCs are the most important ones to get for Anno 1800? And that question is actually kind of subjective and it really depends on how you want to play the game and what you're looking for to get out of the game. There are people who play the game for efficiency, who there are people who play the game uh, just to try to achieve population records and try to beat like three or five million population in, a, in the world and everything. Then there are the beauty builders, those of us who only care about aesthetics. We don't care about efficiency and optimization as much as others. There are countless numbers of ways to play the game, and every DLC is kind of catered a little bit towards different playstyles. However, let's take a look at what I consider the top three DLCs that any player that is getting into Anno 1800 should get for sure if you're not looking to get season passes. If you're just looking to like pick and choose DLCs, these are the three that I think you should definitely get. Then we'll talk about the one or two that I think are completely useless and you can skip. And then everything in between is sort of, you know, it's good to have, but it's not necessary to have. And some of those might kind of flip around a little bit. So in no particular order, let's take a look at first Docklands. So the Docklands DLC is probably a lot of people consider one of the most powerful DLCs in terms of the mechanics that it added into the game. Docklands allows you to export various goods from your uh, trade empire and import 90% of the goods available in the game to you. You cannot import everything, but you can import most everything. Uh, some things that are uh, excluded are some of the New World goods cannot be imported. Some of the Scholar stuff from uh, Land of Lions cannot be imported. A few things from uh, the Passage cannot be exported. You know, things, some stuff like that. But just about everything else can be imported at varying ratios for exports. Now, I'm not going to get into all the ratios and how it all works and stuff. There are guides about that. I have a guide about that. Link is down below in the description, as well as you can check the wiki. So Docklands is extremely powerful. The game changing mechanics of it cannot be understated. And that is why it is one of my top three DLCs that I think every player should get. Next up is going to be Land of Lions. Uh, Land of Lions is kind of a, a, an obvious one for a lot of people because of the Research Institute. The land of Inbessa itself and the elders and shepherds and all of the stuff there, it, you know, it's okay. It's not bad. They're, they're okay. The real power of Land of Lions comes from the scholars and the Research Institute, which you build in the Old World or in Cape Trelawney if you have sunken treasures. The Research Institute allows you to craft specialists and items after you discover them. You play a little slot machine game, randomly discover all of the different items, most all of the items in the game. There are a handful of exceptions of unique quest rewards you cannot get. But you can research those items in the game and then you can craft them. So, you know, instead of having to sit there and roll for items at Eli's Harbor or Isabel or Kahina or whomever, now you can craft those. If you're missing the final part of the extinct species zoological set, then you can just, if you've discovered it, go craft it for 20,000 research points. Beyond the crafting of items and everything, the Research Institute also allows you to do things like move oil wells and clay deposits, which is really, really helpful for optimizing your refineries and all of your production layouts. You can also research permits to build additional Great Easterns, which is a very, very powerful endgame ship. There's also the ability to change fertilities, change mines to different types of mines. There's a lot of different possibilities with the Research Institute. So it is extremely powerful. It is absolutely game changing in terms of being able to not have to run expeditions, World's Fair if you don't want to. You can just get that Research Institute up and running relatively early in the game actually. So I would definitely recommend the Land of Lions DLC to anyone who is looking to increase the ability to get items, specialists, move those oil wells and clay deposits. That's the part of it I, I personally enjoy doing. I don't like crafting items myself, but I love being able to build and uh, not build, but move around uh, oil wells and clay deposits because they're always in the worst spots imaginable. So yeah, super, super useful. Definitely want to check that one out. Last but not least on my little list here is the Seat of Power. Now, this one might be a little controversial for some people, saying the Seat of Power is my top three, but it is. The palace is absolutely amazing. 
having all of those different policies and even just the base departmental effects from the palace is very, very useful. The Department of Welfare, for example, extend the base effect, not even the policy, just the base effect of the Department of Welfare, extends the range of public services. That means you need f uh, fewer schools, variety theaters, universities, and power plants. They do increase the range of power plants. That is really big, especially on an island such as Crown Falls in the Sunken Treasures DLC, where you have a lot of space you need to try and cover with electricity. Having the palace extend that range just by default is really, really nice. The local departments that you can build on addition on other islands and being able to select a specific policy for that island really lets you specialize your islands into residential or industrial or farming, anything like that. There are so many good points to that DLC that I cannot tell people enough that they have got to at least have seat of power as well if they're looking for uh, pick looking to pick and choose which DLCs they want. All right, so those are my top three. Just a quick rundown of the ones that I think are the most important, of the three that I think are most important, and why I think they are. So, you know, didn't want to go too in-depth about them, but just to give you an idea of what they can do for you in your game and why I think they're really good. So with those out of the way, let's take a look at the one DLC, the one DLC that I'm going to say is the weakest in the game and that you can totally skip. And you probably already know what I'm going to say. And it's Botanica. You know, I'm sorry, Botanica to me is just a dud DLC. All it adds is a new cultural type of building that you have to gather modules for, just like your zoo or, mu or the museum. 95% of the sets, all they do is add a fertility onto an island and increase the production of that resource by 25%. Yes, it is nice. Yes, it is cool. It's not that useful, and it's really not that amazing. There are plenty of islands in the game, unless you're playing on a max expert difficulty, and you have only a handful of islands, and they're really tiny, and you really need to squeeze out everything possible. In a normal game, you're going to have more than enough resources scattered around that the botanical stuff is going to be an afterthought, and you probably won't even care about it. The only thing that it really is good for is adding attractiveness, of course, uh, to your islands if you're trying to maximize your palace uh, attractiveness perks or the tourist mooring, things like that. But again, it's really, really minor, and I don't consider the Botanica DLC to be extremely valuable. Now, all the other DLCs are still really good in my eyes. Uh, the rest of them you have, you have Bright Harvest, you have uh, Tourist Season, The Passage, High Life, and of course, Sunken Treasures. There's absolutely nothing wrong with any of those DLCs. They're all very good DLCs. How important they are to you, though, depends on your playstyle, like I talked about in the beginning. Sunken Treasures is one that a lot of people recommend because it does add Crown Falls, which is a massive land space uh, or land mass up in the corner of the new region called Cape Trelawney. Uh, I'll get, I get questions about that on videos all the time. Hey, where did you get this map seed with the giant landmass? Oh, that's Sunken Treasures. It is a very cool DLC. A lot of people love it. Just to give a quick overview of the other DLCs so you know what they contain, Bright Harvest adds tractors and silos. Silos go on your animal farms and increase the productivity of them by 100%. Tractors go on, on agricultural farms and basically quadruple the output. Now, Bright Harvest used to be one that I would say was absolutely necessary. However, with the introduction of Doglands, it's lost a lot of its value because you can import a lot of those raw goods. And so Bright Harvest has lost a lot of its value after Doglands came out, but it's still really, really cool. The Passage DLC adds in a new Arctic region, which includes the ability to build airships, as well as mine gas from plateaus that can be used to construct more airships, as well as power up the new gas power plants, which are more efficient and have a larger range than standard oil power plants. The downside of the Passage DLC and the Arctic region is that that region is fairly difficult and very challenging due to limited space and lack of resources. So it's more of a mid to late game DLC, and if you wanted to pass up on it for a little while, I would not blame you because it does take a bit of time to learn how to properly manage that place. The Tourist Season DLC is kind of a... I wouldn't say it's a dud DLC. It adds some interesting mechanics with the cafes and bars and restaurants because those reduce your consumptions. But the tourists themselves are kind of a pain because you need 
you need at least 10 to 15 hotels. They are very large. Uh, they all look the exact same and they really consume a lot of goods. All for a very minor bonus of, they do provide a lot of income, but you know, you get them mid to late engineers. And by that point, you should be making enough money that the tourist stuff really doesn't really, it doesn't really matter at that point because you're about to get into investors and you're going to have plenty of money. Um, the cafes, bars, and restaurants, they, they have a really weird combination of goods that they reduce. Like one reduces, I think, like fish, sausages, and chocolate. I mean, why? Why? What is that weird combination? It's just very odd combinations and everything that make it kind of eh to me. So it's okay. There's nothing wrong with the tour season DLC, but it's really not. It doesn't shine, I guess, like some of the others do. And then, of course, we have the High Life DLC, which just came out. And that is probably, that really fights for a spot in the top three to me. Because the High Life DLC absolutely revolutionizes how your city looks. It changes your skyline completely. It adds in some really nice consumption reduction buildings in the form of the shopping arcades that have meaningful and well thought out combinations of goods that they reduce the consumption of. And so it really makes sense to fit, to decide where you want those because they have really good coverages on them um, as well as adding extra influence and you have the skyline monument which increases attractiveness and gives you another bit a uh, chunk of influence right there the high life dlc is just really really good and i really think it polishes off season three very very well so it really fights for a top three spot but it doesn't add any major game changing mechanics such as my top three uh choices did all right, guys, and that is it for me. I hope this helped you a little bit to understand how the different DLCs work, what they contain, and which ones might be the most useful for you. If it did, let me know down below in the comments. And hey, if you don't agree with something in this list or you have some other thoughts on them, let me know as well. I would like to hear back from you on what you think are some of the best DLCs in the game or why or why not. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you out a little bit, and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.